Sometimes I don't know what to do with this guy. I know I like him. That's why I invited him. He's one of the most fascinating guys in, in the public domain, although he, you know, he kind of moves in and out of it. The cool moose, Bob Healy, is rope-a-doping his way to his next lieutenant gubernatorial campaign. And of course, his mission's always been to run for the office to eliminate the office. He's got a different approach this time around, and we'll talk about it with him tonight. Uh, don't go anywhere. This will be a fascinating conversation because he's here. Let's tell you what's up here tonight. Uh, come on, man. There's some ridiculous stuff going on right now, just weeks before the end of the school year at our state house. Uh, a poverty conversation yesterday at Rhode Island College with that theme. It looks like the first speaker who made some promises ain't sticking it on the next speaker who doesn't really believe in the promises. I'll explain what that means here in just a moment when we dig in. And uh, what the heck? You know, if, if you got them, smoke them. And if you don't, use your credit. And Hillary's got some questions to answer on health. It's becoming the silly season for the presidential race already. And that one, listen, I, I'm sorry. As a Ranger fan, I can only offer condolences to the Bruin fans around here. Thankfully, Rox is in the seat tonight, and Kevin's not. He'd be throwing things from the other side of the screen. Let's, uh, let's talk about some of the things that are on my state of mind. Last-minute shenanigans. Yeah, here's the headline on the WPRI website. Speaker Mattiello opposes any kneecap grad requirement. Now, again, that's Speaker Mattiello, but the other chamber, the Senate, voted 25 to 9 to stop the entire kneecap process. You know, that's the standardized test that is one of three components necessary beginning in 2014. Now, for students to graduate from high school, we've got a story from Eyewitness News. The Rhode Island Senate taking a stand Wednesday to do away with the kneecap graduation requirement or any standardized testing used as a measure of fitness to graduate high school. Test opponents say it's unfair to special ed students, English language learners, and students who are poor, to name a few. But a vote is unlikely in the House. A spokesman for Speaker Nick Mattiello tells Eyewitness News the Speaker opposes eliminating the test, a bad sign for Rep. Maria Samini's anti-kneecap bill. Students have standardized testing in third grade and fifth grade in eighth grade. We know that students are struggling in those years and yet we're not providing the interventions along the way. And then at 12th grade, it becomes a do or die moment for them. And I feel like as adults and policymakers, we're holding children responsible for our failure to make sure that they're getting what they need. Mattiello says the existence of kneecap waivers makes Samini's bill unnecessary. The waiver process is bringing us right back to that inconsistency. Let's keep regular standards across the state. And if we're really going to have a standard, let's do it. And if we're not, then let's not pretend that we are. Okay, I, you know, I've heard the arguments and I understand the arguments, but you know what? It's four weeks to the end of the school year, Rep, and the Senate you know, voted on this 25 to 9 to, to, to postpone this thing. What kind of a message is that to the kids who have actually earned partial proficiency? We're told you better have this or you're not going to graduate. And then what? We're going to pull the rug out four weeks after, before, before they graduate? What kind of a message is it when we try to use the next carrot or stick and then at the end go, oh, never mind. Just kidding. Wow. I mean, really? Thank goodness Mattiello doesn't like it. Now, I don't like this titular governance of the House. I don't like it, so it's not going to come to the floor. But on this one, he's right. Next. So the Poverty Institute, that's what it used to be called. At uh, Now it's the Institute for Progress or something at Rhode Island College. has this symposium where they talk about poverty. This is the sixth year, and uh, there's a headline here in the coverage of it. Activists, Rhode Island could be Petri dish for change. This is a, a, a nice person, a, a nun, who drives around and talks about, you know, what's important and what's not. It's uh, Sister Simone Campbell. I have her here. And look, uh, look, uh, she talks about everybody being uh, like part of the 100 percent, like we're all in this together, that we got to fix these problems together. But then she tells stories about a woman she met at the White House at, uh, at some presidential event who was working at a clothing store making minimum wage but lo and behold went home after work to a homeless shelter and she says in America that should never happen okay look this working poor argument we should never have anybody who's got a real job who's working in, living in a shelter uh, how long had she been working there what's the context what did she do prior to that what's her education we, 
this this kind of you know in a vacuum conversation about anybody who's earning a paycheck should not be in economic jeopardy is pure folly and they know it and by the way jesus said there would always be the poor and you've all made quite like a pretty good industry out of servicing the poor haven't you there are a lot of graduates coming out of rick a great institution but a lot of graduates coming out of rick who are all about making sure that the poor are there so they can earn a living next item this is interesting. So the 38 Studios debacle continues, right? And it's heating up big time. And, you know, do we pay the debt? Don't we pay the debt? Do we pay the debt? Don't we pay the debt? A journal story today uh, talks about the idea that uh, then Speaker Gordon Fox made some assurances to the ratings agencies that, yes, we will have no turbulence from the General Assembly, which means that, you know, it'll be going through smoothly. Well, as you turn to the new speaker, you know, we had the old speaker and we got the new speaker. We've got video of those guys, I know, just in case you have trouble keeping score at home. That's the new speaker, Nick Mattiello, who took over from the old speaker, Gordon Fox, who made these assurances to the agencies that there'd be no turbulence. Mattiello, to his credit, while he hasn't decided his own perspective on whether to pay these bonds to the 38 Studios bond holders, you know, this $12 million a year for seven years taxpayer debt that we have, he says, I'm not going to be bound by the personal assurances made by the previous speaker. Another separation example, and I think another sign of growing leadership skill on the part of the House Speaker. So good for him. Yes, where are we here? Okay, so legislation on behalf of Twin River coming in to create a little bit of a credit environment there. We got a little piece on this, right? A little headline. We got something, something, something. Panel hears testimony on casino, on casino liens. A Target 12 story on casino liens uh, was really the subject matter uh, where we find that people who have debt are pursued by casinos, not Twin River, but Connecticut casinos, where they lien your house, even for a couple hundred dollars, up to like $50,000 in debt. But Twin River is thinking about doing the following. They're looking to expand uh, their finance operation to let you borrow at the table up to $75,000 to keep playing blackjack or roulette or is that your game rocks roulette that's your game you like roulette. I don't even know how to play roulette uh, I can play blackjack I can play three card poker I can play a lot of poker I can blah, 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 I, but whatever whatever your game is you know what good for them if you're gonna I can't even comprehend having no cash on me and going um, I'll take a loan for 5000 never mind 75000 but I guess it's all relative. I don't care how much money I'd have in the future or in the past. Or what, I don't care. I just can't imagine. What's that feeling like when you leave the building and all of a sudden you go, uh-oh, i got to write them a check for $63,000. That's a bad night. Next. Uh, Bill sticking up for Hillary. Carl Rove, you know, the former Washington operative and uh, pundit for Fox News and the like, has been roughing up Hillary a little bit on her health issues. You know, she did have some trouble. I had no idea, by the way, that it took her six months to recover from that concussion that she had. No one knew that until Bill spoke up, but he was at an event and, and, and uh, he doesn't look that good. But he was talking about how Hillary is in great shape. First, they said she faked her concussion. And now they say she's auditioning for a part on The Walking Dead. <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever it takes. It's a look. She works out every week. She is strong. She's doing great. As far as I can tell, she's in better shape than I am. She certainly seems to have more stamina now. And uh, there's nothing to it. Yeah, on that particular day, she probably is in better shape than the former president. He looked a little tired to me. By the way, the operative word is weak. She works out every week. She may want to step it up to every other day, at least. But my thought is that Benghazi and Monica Lewinsky will be bigger challenges than Hillary, to Hillary than her immediate health issues in this 2014 campaign. Anyway, tough one last night. I was you know, hanging with some of the fellas watching this thing, and... The Bruins laid a major league egg, but now we got a controversy here. Look at what they're saying. Got a little headline. Milan Lucic, I guess, said a little bit too much to Dale Weiss as they shook hands. You've seen Lucic. You know Lucic. You know he's, uh, he's a star. But uh, guess what? They just didn't, uh, they didn't bring it. 
they didn't bring it. That's a little B-roll. That's what we call it in the business of him, as opposed to a congratulations, right? What's this guy crying about? No wonder we hate the Habs around here. I'm a Ranger fan. What's he crying about? Like, it's like Vegas. What happens on the ice stays on the ice, and what's said on the ice ought to stay on the ice. And stop crying for crying out loud. I've always wondered, by the way, in that handshake dynamic, whether they, you know, whether it all just flows out of them and they're all, no, it doesn't. The heat's still in the kitchen and things are going to be said. So what? Good Lord. The best I can do for you Bruins fans. <clears throat> My team starts tomorrow night against Montreal. We'll take him out. All right. We come back. He's running. If you want him to. And then you got to tell him you want him to. And then you got to sign up online. And stay with us. So I got this press release a couple of days ago. I went, oh, he must be right. Oh, and he's not right. Uh, he might, he, I, I, I couldn't figure it out. I spoke with him on the radio, and now he's here tonight. Here's uh, kind of some coverage of it. Projo.com says, Healy says he'll run if supporters get 3,000 signatures. Well, you know, I don't even know if it, it actually, if that's accurate. All you have to do is be a supporter and kind of sign up online at yeah. change.org and say, come on, Bob, I want you to run. The actual is that we're asking for verified voters, so we're going to verify Verified the voters, yeah. right. So, but you'll do that diligence. Good to see you, my man. Good to see you. Long time no see. Yeah. Um, how many elections have you attempted as the Kumus and um, now just as an independent? Well, I would run under the Kumus banner, but okay. it, it's no longer a political party. Right. Um, I ran for governor in 86. Uh, in 94, uh, we got about, I got about 10% of the vote, and so we became a political party and ran 26 candidates for the legislature. In 96, in 98, I ran for governor again, uh, and then in 2002, I ran for lieutenant governor, 2006 and 2010. Right. See, I, I, I arrived on the scene in late 99, so I missed your gubernatorial runs and the actual formation of the mm -hmm. Kumos Party. Remind everybody what the Kumos Party was all about. Well, the Kumos Party was an attempt to give an option to the people of the state of Rhode Island for third party voting and for also, as maybe, a reasonable alternative because so many people were <coughs> sort of in this Democrat mode. It was a Democrat state even back then, uh, and what we were looking for was the people that were maybe not identifying with the Republicans, but maybe identifying with something other than the machine politics of the Democratic administrations. And so we tried. Or and Kumus meant what? Kumus what? Was, actually, Kumus was a couple of different plays. Uh, it, we needed a monosyllabic word to play off of Bumus from Teddy Roosevelt. We, there was a, a, a great spoof on the Providence Journal where uh, they were trying to, there was a moose that came down from the north hung around in Cranston, 1985, and they were, the journal in its infinite wisdom was giving away, a, I don't know, I think it was $120 if you had the first picture of it. So I, I was on the school committee in Warren and they were giving me a little give and take. So I dressed up with these antlers on my head and went out in the backyard and shot some photos and ran in. I knew they went to bed early on Saturday and I knew they wanted it for their Sunday edition because the Cirque. <laughs> so I'd come running in they didn't have a, a black and white lab in house. They had a color lab, but so I, I filmed in black and white. They sent it out. They got it back. There's pictures. It's all Healy with antlers tied to his head. And the so rest the, is history. Well, they put it in the paper as the snout and the tuft look like uh, a moose, but we can recognize that it's the chairman of the Warren School Committee, Bob Healy. Yeah, we should we should know. I mean, you're a serious guy about public policy. I mean, I, I mean, you you're not you're not a gadfly. No. You're hard to define, and of course, your physical appearance always comes up. You're not cutting your hair to run. You're not shaving, blah, blah, blah. End of story. I'm sick of talking about that. I'm <laughs> sure too. you are, too. <laughs> um, but it, 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 it's part of the uniqueness of you. But you, you're a concerned guy. You've had, a, you've had an impact on public policy in your hometowns. Oh, in, in the hometown, definitely. Um, certainly, in, I mean, in the 1994 election, I, I took the town of Warren, which was they had actual experience seeing me govern right. and they you know came behind me on that right all right so um I, i'm going to pause here so i have a, a little extra time to, to talk uh with bob about what his approach is this time around because he's tired and demotivated but if you're motivated and energized so is he next
All right, so let's establish Bob Healy's premise, at least for the, for the, 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 the 2000s and running for lieutenant governor, has been to run to eliminate. Correct. Win the election to eliminate the office. Right. Sir, the short sir, piece on that is what? Well, the short piece on it is the office costs the taxpayer a million dollars a year. I'm not sure what function that re office really has. It certainly has only one constitutional duty, and that is to wait the death or incapacity of the governor. And it's just an office that you can make whatever you want to make as you work. And for a million dollars a year, I think it's just an outrageous, uh, maybe a drop in the bucket in, in, in terms of the huge I, budget. I, I, but I, I guess it's always a step. I've always thought your million dollar uh, argument is, while tangible, is, 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 uh, is lesser than the actual bigger picture, which is that change can happen, uselessness, right. at least in your perspective, it's not necessary in government. So it's not about the million dollars per se. Right. It's about a bigger message. And it gives us, it gives the, the idea, I mean, the, the whole concept, the Gandhi concept, the, the long journey begins with a single step. And if you show that the public is, is very much interested in saving their money, not wasting tax dollars, use that office, which I'm not going to ask compensation for, hmm. use that office as a bully pulpit, serve in the office in case something does happen to the governor, but if nothing happens, then I abolish the office while I'm in there. Yeah, Mollis and uh, McKee are the two Democrats that have announced uh, to, to run uh, for this office. I'm sure hmm. they're going to be just so pleased to know that you're back in, uh, uh, in the game. Am I back? Uh, well, that's, see, that's yeah. the thing. We don't, we don't even know if you're back. Rox, if we could put up, there's Danny McKee, you saw Ralph Mollis, if we can put up the pros and cons. This was very, very interesting. So you put out this press release and saying, look, here are the pros of me running. You can make a change. You wouldn't let down the dedicated supporters. You wouldn't lose established momentum that you've had in years past. And great ego boost. By the way. Politics is always an ego boost. You know what, though? I gotta, this is why, you know, I, I like Bob Healy so much. You have no pretense about you, and you're also very candid and grounded. It is a high to have people go, we love yeah. you, save us. Yeah. So many politicians will try to deflect the idea that there's an ego part of this whole thing. You, you say it so, so matter-of-factly, it's refreshing. Well, you like yeah. the high. You've liked the high of being yeah. a popular guy. It's it's nice to be able to be heard, and people kind of listen to what I say, so it's kind of... Just like I'm sure you have the high people listen to what you say on no, the radio. No, not me at all. It's and not about ego at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's what it is. See, it's he's more authentic thing. than me. Kidding. Now, here, 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 well, that's a whole other conversation. Here are the cons. He, he likes what he's doing now. He's got investments uh, across the, the, the ocean. He's got uh, business that he runs. And I'm sure a lot of that opportunity is in place. Mm -hmm. You're not energized by politics, and you're too old. I am. Yeah. yeah. So... I, I, when, when I started in 94, and if people read the platform in 94, and had I been elected in 94 and had an opportunity to try to implement that program, I think the state would be in an entirely different position. Of course, you can't go and rerun the race. People didn't want to do it. That's fine. They were afraid or whatever. But the ideas are still there. You go into the Rhode Island Historic Museum and you can see the documents. They were published in 94. Well, they were published in 98. They were, you know, other than maybe a little bit more gray, like we all have, you don't look too old. How old are you? Fifty-seven. All right, so what? But I understand how it feels. Feel the knees start to go yeah, after well, fifty-two, yeah, fifty-three. It's, it's just know. that you're tired of. It, it's hard to keep rolling the rock up the same hill, and if uh, if there's no appreciation for it, then I understand. So I mean, okay, so you wrote this this press release. It's kind of a letter, uh, and you can see it on change.org, where you can go. You can also get a Facebook page, um, a Facebook slash uh, Draft Healy, which Facebook.com slash right. draft TLE. Yeah, that, that, that has a petition on it. Right. Okay. Well, it also hooks in the change that right. And you want 3,000 registered voters to be able to say, come on, Bob, come off the bench. Sure. And then you promise that you'll be as energized as you've ever been. I will run with the same energy that I've always had. Tell me why you're <clears> the only guy that I would let get away with this on my program. Because I'm trying to figure it out myself. Because you have a sense about you that thinks that I'm real. I do think you're real. And that's all it takes. And I also think you've put the equity in. It's not like you're some newcomer who hasn't tried it the right way before, mm -hmm. right? I, when I was young, I decided to try and work for change inside the system as opposed to trying change from outside the system. And so I run for office, announced things, made my opinions very clear. You don't need the money. Not particularly. You're in good shape. 
I mean, you're, decent shape. You got businesses. You you do a lot of pro bono legal work. I do. Um, uh, at the end of the day, by June fifteenth, if you get these signatures, that's the date. Project for me right now. Will you be happy that you got recruited, or relieved that you didn't? At this moment, I have to say that I, that's the the internal questioning that's going on. I'm I'm torn. I mean, on one hand. If I really wanted to run, I would just make the decision to run. I've done this three times. The people have told me an answer. I mean, Insanity is doing the same thing over and but over. But they keep stopping you going, hey, Bob, how come you're not running? I know. So, <laughs> so I am really torn. I mean, I, I would be perfectly happy whichever way it comes out. I, I okay. honestly can say that. And I, and I honestly believe it. Come back as we get closer to the date. Sounds like fun. All right. Bob Healy. He's got no TV, by the way. <laughs> and no cell phone, either. We're working the on the only guy phone. that doesn't insult me by saying, "Hey, I've never seen your show." <laughs> your state of mind. When we come back. Stay with us. Bob Healy, the most unique guy I know in politics, no doubt. Full screen, as we say in the business. Two two eight eighteen eighty six is the voicemail. Email me or Facebook post, and your opinion will be offered and aired like this voicemail. Great guest tonight from uh, Navigant. I would have also liked to heard from the town manager. But um, one thing, your guest chair, very squeaky. <laughs> it wasn't squeaky for Bob. This is from uh, our Narragansett guest on the party last week. I, was he moving around a lot, Steve, from the uh, Neighborhood Association from, from Scarborough? I'd be squeaking, too, if I had to battle those kids all the time. We'll see you tomorrow night on My State of Mind on the radio at noon on WPRL. Good night.